Hey guys, Brett, Motion Raceworks. Today's Tech Tip Tuesday may seem very simple to a lot of people, but it's very important. We're gonna talk about oil line routing, in and out of oil pumps, in and out of your engine block, and in and out of your oil filter adapter. And then also, we're gonna cut open this oil filter. This oil filter is off of my car. We're gonna cut it open and do an inspection. Oil filter inspection is probably the most important thing you can do in your race program. We're gonna show you how to do it and what to look for. Okay, so if you've just ordered and seen for the first time or you've used these style of components before, oil system components are marked in and out. It's marked in and out on the filter housing. It's marked in and out on your dry sump pump. And these labelings are in correspondence to oil flow. So I've seen a lot of mistakes get made in the past uh, with running lines from your engine to your filter, from your pump to your filter and you just have to think about it a second, okay? So basically, what this represents is the flow of the oil. This piece here goes, this is for a Coyote, this is a fluid works part that we make. This is, goes on the engine block where the factory oil filter housing goes for a remote style filter. So you're gonna use this if you use a dry sump system, or you're gonna use this if you use a factory oil pump. So all of these components can be used together or they can be used separately that's why they're not labeled like A and B and things that may make more sense to a lot of people. But this system's been around forever. Everyone uses it. And you just kind of think about it for a second of where's the oil flowing. All right, so we're gonna start with the engine block adapter on a factory style engine. There is no dry sump system. The oil pump is inside of the engine, picking the oil up from the oil pan. Oil picks up from the oil pan, goes through the oil pump, and it's going to flow out of the engine. That's our outline. So oil is now flowing out of the engine and it's going to come into the oil filter housing to feed the oil filter because we want to filter this oil before it gets fed to your main journals, to your engine. So we're coming out of the engine into the filter housing. Now the oil flow is coming out of the filter housing and coming into the engine to supply the engine. So if we just have these two components, that's going to be the hose routing. We're going to come out of the engine, into the filter, out of the filter, into the engine. The mistakes in the past I've seen made is people try to match these up. They'll go out to out and in to in. And the biggest problem in that scenario is on the outside of our oil filter housing is we have oil supply feeds. These are for turbochargers, for oil pressure sensors, for things like that. So if your oil pressure sensor is on this out and you go out to out, you're gonna have an oil pressure reading, but the oil's not gonna flow through the filter because of the check in the filter and your engine's not gonna get any oil. So you may think you have oil pressure because you're reading from this filter, but your engine actually doesn't have oil pressure. That's why it's a very good idea that if your engine has an oil pressure galley or access point for a pressure gauge on your engine to read the engine oil pressure from the engine, not the filter housing. Uh, because in this scenario, you could mess yourself up if you hook your line, or even if you're just working on your car and you take two lines off and you put them back on and you get them switched, you may not know you don't have oil pressure. So this is very important to always check your in and out because the oil is gonna flow out of the engine, into the filter, out of the filter, into the engine and that's basically that all the wet sump engines are going to be similar some may have the in and out at a different location on this coyote one they're stacked right next to each other as you can see uh, but if you have any other questions with that make sure you reach out before you plummet because this can be a, a very crucial mistake you're going to lose your engine if you hook these lines up backwards all right now let's look at these three components in situation of a dry sump so we have the same engine we're working on our coyote we have a dry sump pump and now we have in and out on our dry sump pump. You can see we have pressure in and out. This is the actual oil pump. And we have four scavenge in and outs. The in from our oil pump is where the pump is going to be drawing oil from. And the scavenge is also a pump, it's a scavenge pump. So where the scavenge is drawing oil from. The scavenge are gonna draw oil from the oil pan. So the pumps, these ins here is gonna be oil from the oil pan going into the scavenge pump. Pressure in is going to be oil from your tank, from your storage tank. So your dry sump tank is gonna be plumb to the inlet of the oil pump. So all of these have uh, oil to draw into the pump and then come out. On the top of the pump, we're labeled pressure out and scavenged out. As you can see, the scavenge sections are plugged here and we have one line. These are our manifold internally of this pump. So all of these pumps have a passage that flow oil up to this pump to the exit. This is going to go to the top of your dry sump tank. If your dry sump tank has two returns on the top, you can take any of these plugs out and put another fitting in. Um, you can run as many as you want, but I don't, I don't know of a tank that has more than two. A uh, tank I run has two, 
And you can also move these around. If you want to move this fitting back here for line clearance, you put the plug up here because in the top of these sections, they're all, like I said, manifold together. So it doesn't really matter where you move this fitting. If you run one or two fittings, um, just remove the plug, get the fitting from us, and then put it in there. Pressure out. This is our important one, right? So we're going to come out of our oil pump. So before our oil pump was in the engine, now our oil pump's external of the engine. So we're going to come out of the oil pump. First thing we want to do, filter the oil. Oil is going to come out of the pump, come into the oil filter, come out of the oil filter, and into the engine. Okay? But now we have an extra port. Just capping that. The oil pump's removed from inside of the engine, so this oil galley goes to something that doesn't exist. It's not tied into any other oil galleys. So on a Coyote engine, you don't have to do anything else internally, uh, but to just cap this plug here, as it's just going to be open to the engine. So out of the filter, into the engine, you got oil pressure. Okay. I'm going to briefly talk about the hose to use in these systems. It's very important that you use the correct hose in a dry sump system, uh, even more so than a wet sump system because the pumps internally. But these pumps here draw a lot of vacuum. These are powerful pumps, and if you use the incorrect hose, it's going to collapse the hose and suck it closed. We sell Fragola hose at Motion Raceworks. We have the, um, all of the PTFE braided hose is rated to vacuum, and it won't collapse. Uh, but if you're using other brands' hose, if you're not sure if they don't have the spec listed on their website, call them and ask them. You want to make sure that you use a hose that is vacuum rated that won't collapse. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to cut this oil filter open for inspection. This is a practice that you should get into with your engine every time you remove the oil filter or any time that you have a new engine and you want to check the life of your engine, see how it's, how it's going. Um, you can see things in the filter before the damage occurs, okay? So this is one of those things that you're going to have to get accustomed to. It's kind of like coolant pressure or crankcase pressure. Every oil filter is going to look a little different. So if I compare to my friends or compare to another engine that's been built, how long the engine's been in service, uh, the material is used in that engine, the ring type in that engine may create a little different metal from engine to engine. But what you want to do is kind of catalog your findings and then keep them in comparison to what you pulled out before. Okay, a uh, new engine, new engine assembly, there, there's pretty much guaranteed always going to be a little material in your filter. Um, it's the engine breaking in, things like that. Now, the line between normal and excessive is what you're going to have to figure out, what you're going to have to ask your engine builder to, to know about that. But there are some big no-goes no matter what, okay? If there's a copper color in the filter, that's going to be a bearing material on a Coyote engine. Um, if there's little black fragments in there, it's guaranteed it's your timing chain uh, guides going in there. So there's some normal things, depending on the engine type and the components that you can look for. Um, this filter is actually off my car. It's been ran, so we're going to cut it open and see what it looks like. The easiest way to cut open an oil filter is with an oil filter cutter. This is an inexpensive cutter, it's an Amazon unit. There's a bunch of different companies that, that make them. Uh, if you're in a pinch, I've seen people use like tin shears and cut around the top, or even a Sawzall. And you say, oh, a Sawzall is gonna create a lot of metal, but I've done that before, and you kind of basically know the Sawzall metal. It's not embedded in the filter, it's kind of on the outside. But we're just gonna cut along the top of this ring. Um, it's kind of like a food can, and then we're gonna take the filter element out. Easy as that. Cuts it open, it does a nice job. And then we have our filter element. We're gonna pull this guy out. Now he's been draining for a while, so it's, the filter's pretty, pretty drained out. The other thing you're gonna do is you're gonna peek in the bottom of this housing. A lot of the heavier stuff may fall out of suspension off the filter and go into the bottom of the housing. So you can look in there, kind of see what you got going on. This one has a little bit of aluminum in it. Uh, like I said, you'll have to determine with you and your engine builder what is normal and what isn't normal, but that's basically the situation there. So now we have the actual filter element. This probably looks, if you've never seen inside of an oil filter, they all pretty much look exactly the same. The oil, when it comes into your adapter, goes down through the holes in the top, comes around the outside of the filter, same as like a fuel filter. The oil is then filtered through, and then your clean pressure oil comes out. So if you ever have an oil filter adapter and say the markings got worn off and you're unsure, you can basically just take a look at the oil flow 
and where the port is running, and you'll know which way is the in and which way is the out. The oil is going to come in, run around the outside of the filter, and then your clean, pressurized oil is going to come out of the center. We'll get a close up here, but from here, now we can look down into the filter element, see what kind of material we have uh, built up or what we don't have built up, and then make a decision or at least note the condition of our engine or what we feel like. Another thing that you can do is you can actually remove these top pieces and the bottom pieces and lay the filter out flat. It's just an accordion straight piece of material um, and that way you can really inspect it. These Wix racing filters use a really good glue up top and they're actually really hard to come apart like that. If you had a, a, a different filter, it'd be real easy to take apart. But the reason why these filters are good is because of that. It, they, uh, they won't blow apart with high oil pressure. So we'll get, probably gotta get a close up uh, of this and show you guys what we got working with. So the fragments really get down into the center. So what you can do is kind of peel these back, look around, you can see like one little speck of aluminum there. That one looks pretty good. And you're just gonna go through the oil filter and look like this. I have a couple images of some really bad oil filters, so we'll post them in here so you guys can see. But when these things are bad, you're gonna know they're bad. Like if you're looking in here and you're like, oh, there's one tiny little piece of aluminum, you're in good shape. When these things, you got a bearing issue, you have something making contact somewhere, there's going to be a lot of material in this filter and it's going to be pretty obvious. Okay, so that's it. Like I said, simple but very important. You just want to visualize the oil flow. It's coming out of the oil pump, out of the engine, into the filter, and then back into the engine. If it helps you to like draw a little diagram uh, before you do your plumbing, maybe do that. But again, just visualize the way the oil is flowing and you won't make a mistake. That's the easiest way to do it. Thanks for tuning in. If you have any other tech tips you want to see, let us know.